Hi, everyone. Often during the compositing process, where the individually rendered CGI elements are reassembled into the final shot, there is a need to isolate certain objects or materials in the rendered image in order to apply color correction filters or effects. This can even apply to post-processing a single image in a 2D paint program like Photoshop. Many 3D software packages have the ability to export object ID and material ID passes during the rendering process, which can be used to select targeted areas for further manipulation. In this video, we want to explore some techniques within Terrigen that will allow us to store an object surface shader information in the red, green, and blue channels of an EXR image. We'll call this an RGB matte image to signify that we're using the three color channels in a specialized manner. This is a slightly different approach from using Terrigen 4 Professional's Render Layers feature to isolate groupings of objects, and some versions of this approach have the added advantage of working in all versions of Terrigen. Let's look at a frame towards the end of our shot, in which we see the vast forest of evergreen and deciduous trees. For this example, we'll keep it simple and isolate the evergreen foliage from the deciduous foliage and both of these from all the tree's non-foliage surfaces. We'll use the red channel to store all the vegetation's non-foliage materials, such as bark and branches, the green channel for the evergreen forest foliage, and the blue channel for the deciduous forest and shrub foliage. As you can see, each channel provides a mat that can be used to isolate those specific areas for further manipulation during post-processing. And here's some examples of how we can use these mats to change the color values of the forest populations. Terrigen provides a number of ways to create RGB matte images and assets. And for this video, we'll focus on two concepts. The first is to modify an existing 3D object shaders within a project. These modifications will only affect the current project and not affect the source 3D object shaders. The second technique saves the modifications as a Terrigen clip file, so they may be imported into other projects. In the object node list, Select one of the object reader nodes for a population. The icon for this type of node is the single large blue cube, not the icon with three small blue cubes. The node network view has automatically centered itself on the selected node. In order to access the 3D object's materials and shaders, we need to open its internal node network. Right-click on the 3D object node and select Internal Network. Alternatively, you can double-click on the node's plus sign to do the same thing. This 3D object has two default surfaces, one for the leaves and one for the bark. And it's important to note that the look of the internal node network may vary between different types of 3D object formats. Double-click on the node labeled bark to open its settings. To make the trunk of the tree occupy the red channel in our RGB matte image, first click on the color swatch to the right of the luminosity value to open the color picker window. Set the red channel's color value to 255 if using RGB mode, or 1.0 if using the decimal color mode. Then press OK and close the window. The luminosity parameter will force the material to emit the chosen color value from its surface, much like a light might do, and is often used to create glowing objects. Now, set the base color value to zero or black by typing in zero to the input field, or moving the slider all the way to the left. In older versions of Terrigen, this is called the diffuse color. By setting the base or diffuse color value to black, the surface will not diffusely reflect any light from the environment. Under the Specular tab, make sure the Fresnel reflectivity value is set to zero. In older versions of Terrigen, this is simply called the reflectivity. Setting both the base color and the Fresnel reflectivity values to zero ensures that the material cannot reflect any light from the environment. Next. We'll do the same thing with the leaf shader, only we'll assign its luminosity value to be blue because it's one of the deciduous types of trees in our shot. Additionally, keep in mind that unlike the bark material, which is usually an opaque material, leaf materials often use the alpha channel of the image supplying the texture, and this should be preserved under the opacity tab. Otherwise, you may end up with square card-like leaves, which will not match the beauty pass render of the element, and will defeat the purpose of creating the RGB matte image in the first place. Now we need to repeat this process for the remaining tree populations in the shot. 
Remember that the leaves of the evergreen trees are assigned to the green channel, while the leaves of the deciduous trees are assigned to the blue channel. Here's a render of all the populations in our shot with the RGB matte surface settings. As you can see, each of the red, green, and blue channels of the RGB matte images store the visual data that we've assigned to it. And as a side note, it doesn't matter which color channel stores which data. Sometimes your 3D object may have many materials assigned to it, and the three available color channels are just not enough to isolate all the surfaces in one render pass. In this case, you can combine similar type surfaces into one color channel, or you may need to create a second project file and render sequence. In this rendered image, the aircraft has four materials assigned to it. The first three materials have been assigned to the red, green, and blue channels, and the remaining material has been given a black luminosity value. The project file was then saved and rendered. Then, a second project was created in which the fourth and last material was assigned to the red channel, and all the other materials were given a black luminosity value. In this way, once this project is rendered, we have a way to isolate all of the object's materials in post-production. So far, we've seen how to modify the shaders of an object within an existing project to create an RGB matte pass. But we can also save these modified shader settings for use in other projects by selecting a group of nodes and saving them as a Terrigen clip file. To save the modified shader nodes, left-click and drag a selection box around the nodes to select them. Then right-click and select Save Nodes as Clip File. The Create Clip File window will appear, where you can add a description, reminders, and tags as desired. When done, click on the Create Clip File button and navigate to the location you wish to save the file and give it a descriptive name that indicates its use as an RGB matte object. You can even select the object node itself and save it as a clip file. Click on the up-level bookmark on the left side of the internal node network to return to the node network. Then, right-click on the object node and choose Save Nodes as Clip File. Follow the same procedure as before to save the object node as a clip file. Now, let's look at two ways to apply the data we just saved. First, we'll go to the internal node network of the 3D object being used in a population. Right-click and select Insert Clip File. Then navigate to the location of the corresponding surface shader clip files and select it. Once the nodes are imported, you may need to drag them around a bit in the internal node network to see them unobstructed. Drag a connection line from the output of the last shader in the hierarchy to the surface shader input at the bottom of the view. Now, this population will use the new surface shaders, and the 3D preview will update to reflect the change. Keep in mind that when connecting new shaders to an object in this manner, you need to make sure that any file paths used by the new shaders are mapped correctly for the current project. This is because they may be based on the relative paths to the project and object reader node in which they were originally created. For example, to verify the relative paths are correct for the current project, click on the Leaf Shader node to open it. Notice that the Color Image parameter has an image assigned to it. Click on the Folder button to the right of the parameter and select Preview Image. If the relative path is set correctly, the Preview window will open and display the image. Alternatively, you can click on the yellow triangle icon at the bottom of the main interface to display any errors or warnings in the project. If a relative path was not found for an item, a warning message will be indicated. Another way to apply the data is to import the clip file of the object node we saved. Return to the main node network, right-click, and select Insert Clip File. Then navigate to the clip file and select it. In the object node list, Select the Population node. Then click on the green plus button to the right of the Object Maker parameter and choose Assign Object. Then select the object just imported into the project with RGBM shaders applied to it. When using this technique, you'll end up with two objects in your project, which increases memory usage. But you can delete the unused object in order to free up some memory if needed. Just as with the previous method, Verify that the correct relative file paths are in use for this project, and repath them if necessary.
It's also important to be aware of any objects in our scene that may occlude the RGB matte materials from the camera's point of view. For example, the three aircraft in our shot pass in between the camera and the forest terrain beneath them. The terrain and even the clouds may need to act as occluders as well. In many cases, these objects will need to be set as holdout objects for the RGB matte pass so that they block out portions of the RGB matte objects behind them. Terrigen 4 Professional allows us to set individual objects render nodes to hold out in some cases, but not all. We need a more general way to cause all of the non-matte objects to render as holdouts, and the render layer features allow us to do this. In the node network, select the existing render layer node from our renderer. Press Ctrl D on your keyboard to duplicate the node. Alternatively, you can press Ctrl C to copy the node, and then Ctrl V to paste the node into the project. Either method will create a new render layer node without any object group assignments. Drag a connection line from the output of the new render layer node to the render layer input of the render node. Double click on the new render layer node to open it up and give it a descriptive name like RGB matte pass. You can assign up to five object groups per render layer. It's important to note that if you have nested groups within other groups in the node network, you must assign the group that actually contains the objects, not the parent group. In our project, we created four object groups for the evergreen and deciduous trees, and one group for the shrubs. Click on the green plus button to the right of each object group parameter, and assign one of the vegetation groups to each setting. Make sure that the render node is set to visible, and the cast shadows and other rays is unchecked or disabled. At the bottom of the window, set the render mode for all other objects to hold out and uncheck the cast shadows and other rays setting. To summarize, we've instructed Terrigen to render the populations in our project that have the RGB matte shaders assigned to them, and for everything else in the project, such as the terrain, clouds, and aircraft, to be treated as a holdout object. Here's a rendered frame showing the holdout object occluding the populations beneath it. When not using render layers, the shaders on these other objects need to be set to black some other way. We are going to disable all light sources and global illumination in the scene. And this might be enough to make the terrain appear black as we want it to. But this doesn't always work, because it depends on the reflective properties of the shaders on the terrain. To demonstrate this more clearly, turn off all the lights in the project by left-clicking and dragging a selection box around all the light nodes in the node network then pressing the D key on your keyboard to disable them. Now, click on the Shaders button on the toolbar and select the Add Layer button and select Surface Shader, then Reflective. Adding this shader will apply a reflective effect over the surface of the terrain. Here's a render with the reflective shader covering the terrain. Even though we've disabled all the lights in the scene, the RGB matte objects are being reflected on the surface of the terrain. To ensure that any surfaces applied to the terrain don't show up in the RGB matte pass, click on the Add Layer button again, and then Surface Layer. We'll use this surface layer to overwrite all the color values from the shader nodes above it. Rename the surface layer to something descriptive that signifies its use as an RGB matte surface, like RGBM Terrain. Then, click on the Enable Test Color checkbox and set the value to zero or black. Here's a render with the surface layer added to the terrain. Now, all the materials on the terrain have been effectively blocked out. With the RGB matte shaders and values applied to the objects and populations in our project, it's time to render the RGB matte pass images. There are a few basic render considerations for the RGB matte pass, because we want it to render as fast as possible and to accurately match the image sequences rendered for the beauty pass. Click on the Renderers button on the toolbar to bring up the renderer's parameters. In order for the detail, anti-aliasing, and motion blur of the rendered RGB matte images to precisely match the rendered beauty pass images, we'll use the exact same values. If you're using a version of Terrigen that doesn't allow the planet with its atmosphere and clouds to be rendered as holdout, 
you'll need to disable the Atmo slash Cloud Visible checkbox. You can also do this if you don't need the clouds or atmosphere to include your RGB matte render, and it will probably save some render time. When using render layers, you have the option to override some of these settings under the Shading and Lighting Flag section of the Layer Settings tab. Under the Sequence Slash Output tab, choose an output image file name with the extension TIF or EXR, and make sure you include the characters percent %04D. If you save the TIFF files, 8-bit precision should be enough for these RGB matte images, and if you save to EXR, 16-bit precision should be enough. So use the TIFF Options or EXR Options button to open a window where you can set those appropriately. Click on the Lighting button on the main toolbar to bring up the lighting nodes in the project. To eliminate all lighting in the project, select and then disable the EnviroLight node by clicking on the Enable checkbox. Then, select the Sunlight node and do the same thing. If you're using a version that allows you to choose between Standard Renderer and Path Tracer, set the render method to Standard Renderer. This could save some render time if any reflective materials left in the scene are calculated for some reason. Now, the project can be saved and is ready to be rendered. In this video, we've covered a lot of topics, from converting the surface shaders of a 3D object for use as an RGB matte object, to saving Terrigen clip files, and applying them to a final project for render. While perhaps not the most intuitive technique for creating mats, it illustrates the versatility of Terrigen to generate the assets needed to create a final shot. We hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.